this episode of The Guest, I will be discussing with multiple award-winning filmmaker Rogers Ofime. Ofime is best known for producing several notable Nigerian television soap operas such as The Johnsons, Tinsel, Hotel Majestic, Hush, among others. The highly successful feature films Voiceless and Oloibiri also bears his creative signature. In 1994, Ofime obtained a certificate in drama, certificate in music in 1996, and a Bachelor's of Arts, all from the Obafemi Awolowo University in Oshun State. He obtained a Master's of Arts from the University of Ibadan, Oyo State, Nigeria. In 2016, he graduated from Norbertson College in Canada with a certificate in business administration. Rogers Ofime is currently pushing the boundary in filmmaking with his new project, Conversations in Transit, a movie to be shot almost entirely on a moving train. In this chart, Rogers Ofime will be revealing more on the secrets behind his serial exploits. Let's meet our guest. Hi guys, welcome to The Guest. My name is Ahina Atta. I'm your host and I have Nollywood veteran filmmaker in the house, mm -hmm. Rogers Ofime. Why did you make this face? <laughs> that makes me look old, like veteran. You oh don't God. have to be old oh, to be a veteran. Oh. Your work speaks for itself. Well, yeah, but you know, when you say veteran, sometimes you're looking like, ah, how old is that guy? <laughs> <laughs> like, he's as old as RMD. <laughs> So one uh, unique thing about you is your creativity. You have created a lot of beautiful masterpieces mm. over the years. So what falls or inform your creativity? Where does it stem from? I, I think for me, it's just the fact that I'm a creative person. So everything I do, think, eat, dream is creative. Okay. So I may just be walking on the road and I see something and I go, wow, there's something about this. And just packs up something. Has it always been like this from childhood or at a <coughs> point in your life you realize that you are this person that you want to do filmmaking? Well, I, I think I started this business from childhood, from the, from the age of six or seven. Really? And, uh, yeah, and I've been, I've been in it since then. Never stopped, funny enough. <laughs> Which Never business? Filmmaking business from six? I've been, I've, I've been in the business of entertainment from age six. I started, I started with a group called the Young Cola Nuts, and all we do is dance and drama. Okay. And then from there, um, from there I was picked up by some local Efe, the late some local Efe, and um, Israel Ebo Physics Productions. And all we did was just go around Nigeria acting. Wow. And then from there to the university to study theater and film. And then from there, still doing the same thing. Wow. <laughs> so what um, movie icons growing up then did you admire that you wanted to be like? Um, locally or internationally? Both. Um, w I, you know, oftentimes, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not being biased. I, I often like to stick to the local ones because um, it was a lot easier taking my inspiration from people that I can see and you can talk to. Um, of course, I had people that I admired from a distance, but it was, for me, mentoring or admi admiration, or I don't know what, what to use for it, but mentoring, let me put it that way, it's better for me if I can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you most of the time, or some of the time. Okay. When I finished my master's, I, I worked with Tadi. What Tadi did you major in? Theater and film. Wow. Directing, major. Wow. Uh, working with Tadi Ogidon, I had an opportunity of meeting the likes of RMD, Shola Shobawale, Mahmoud Ali Balogun, um, um, a whole lot of them like that. And you know, sitting with them sometimes, or being around where they're having, a, where they're having conversations, regarding film and television, it was just mind-blowing. Wow. Yeah. So I know every filmmaker has a drive, a story to tell. What inspired you to go into filmmaking, not just acting or directing? What inspired me to go into filmmaking? Um, well, I, I think for me, I'm, first, I'm a TV person. Okay. I, I honed my skills as a producer um, on TV, television, as a producer. And then from there, transitioned into film. I wouldn't say transition, because I still do both. Um, 
So when you say what inspired me to go into film, yeah, it, it just sounds like, oh, there was something that, boom. Maybe you wanted to tell a story <laughs> or do something. <laughs> Look, for, for, you see, for, for, for me as a theater artist, okay. um, I always tell people there are two types of theater. There's theater on screen and theater on stage. Um, we live in a digital world. And what most people, what most of my colleagues did not do was to transition very easily into theater on screen. And um, when I discovered that the, the uh, theater on stage doesn't have that huge momentum like it used to, um, film, film and television is taking over. I just did, I just transitioned. And, and transitioning for me was first learning from the likes of Taddy and, um, and uh, Erica Klopper, um, a woman based in South Africa. She was in Nigeria. Um, um, and those two people are my greatest inspiration when it comes to film and television, a male and a female. Let's talk about Tin Cell, which you okay. are the pioneer producer. That series is the longest running series in Africa. What does it take to sustain a series like that? You know, first of all, I would say hard work. And then most important, I always like to tell this story. It's a very long one, but I, unfortunately, we don't have the time. Tinsel was hard from the beginning. It, it, it was it's, it's the first multicam studio-based daily drama series in Nigeria. Um, so we didn't understand it. And then apart from that, uh, getting, it, getting it off the ground was a lot of work. In fact, you will not believe it. We had um, over two years of pre-production before we could even get started. Wow. Yeah. We have it in other parts of the world. I mean, we have it in South Africa. Let me not, let me, let me not even say the world. Africa. We've got it in South Africa. And it's doing well in South Africa. South Africa has got, they've got that serious culture. Um, we didn't have it here. So getting that started, and we wanted to make sure that it's something that is at par with what obtains globally. Or let me, okay, let me not say globally, Africa, because South Africa was the benchmark for, every, for, for us. And um, most of the things they had going for them was hard getting here. Uh, I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> but, but it took us two years to get the first season going. Ran out of money, um, got chased out of the studio, for some of us, we were in that project for one year without, without being paid. Wow. Uh, that's, not, that's not a multi-choice fault, though. But we were in that project for one year without being paid. And it was just that resilience. It was just, that, it was just the fact that, you know what, there's something about this project. There is something that, we, that some of us are not. Some people left. Some of us stayed. I was on the project one and a half years, going to two years, um, on a daily basis, going to work without being paid. Same with some other people. Some of them that we started together are still there till date. You know, so imagine if we gave up. Imagine if we said, you know what, this is too hard. Some of us are not even, we were not able to feed our family. So you're going to work every day. You're not doing any other thing, just the same one thing. And at the end of the month, no, no take home for you. And that went on from January to February, like that, like that, like that. I remember the day they locked us out of LTV8 Studios. And I was like, come on, guys, let's go, let's go. So they locked us, of, locked us out of the studio, and we started working from the LTV8 cafeteria. And then they chased us out of the place, and we started working from my car. So at what point did you get the picture for Tinsel? At what point? <laughs> at the point where they felt like, you know what? Looks like these guys are really serious about this thing. Okay. Let's, get back to, let's, let's get back on track with them. OK, forget all the mess that happened before. Let's get back on track. And um, the rest is history. So the success of that. Um, series is that what inspired you for the Johnsons, which to me is quite different and unique from <coughs> most um, family sitcoms we have on TV. Because one thing that I love about the Johnsons is the casting. You see the family and they look so real, you almost forget that you're not related. <laughs> you think that they are really related in real life. So, what inspired the Johnsons and how did you cast? Uh, well, the Johnsons and Tinsel don't relate. Okay. <laughs> um, but for the Johnsons, it was just it was just the thing of creating a drama that is family based, okay. a drama that is um, a regular Nigerian family. 
and if you watch it, you'll always discover that that opening with a face line where you are just like a regular Nigerian family. That's, that's the basis of the Johnsons. It, it, because you will find a Tara in every family. You find an Efe, you find, you find a mom that is like that or a dad that is like that. And, um, and you know, the beautiful thing is you can, you can watch, you watch the Johnsons and you either say, oh, this has happened in my family before, or this, is, this still happens in my family, or I know someone like that that this happens to. And for us also, I think one of the, one of the things that we, uh, we were hell-bent on doing is there's got to be a message. Okay. There has to be a message. We just don't want to make people laugh. We just don't want to, we just don't want to come on the screen and make a fool of ourselves. There has to be a message. So after laughing, what have you taken away from the, from the project? So our, our scriptwriters always know that we, we ensure that at the end, from the beginning of that story that you are writing to the end, it must end with a message. Mm. If there's no message, we're not, we're not shooting that. What does it take to run a television series for so long? The Johnsons, <coughs> Tinsel, what strategy, what elements do you need to, to run a TV series for? Um, yes. Honestly, to me, my opinion, I don't know what any other one would, any other person would say. It's a team. You need the right team. Okay. You need the right people. Um, the right people don't mean the people who are extremely educated or who have all the knowledge. The right people mean, to me, people who are ready to work, who have the same spirit with you. Okay. People who understand what the vision is. People who are ready to stay late night to achieve a vision. People who would sit in the boardroom and, get, and say, okay, where, where are we going? What do we do? How are we going to go about this? Um, if you've got the right team, then you guys can work out a strategy that would work. Again, someone would say, oh, there's a, there is a formula for television. Yes. But for us, for me particularly, my formula is get the right team. Listen to the team. Let the team drive the process. Mm. And the rest is history. So let the team drive the process. I'll be right back <laughs> after this break. Keep watching the guests. Hi, guys. Welcome back. We still have the veteran. <laughs> filmmaker <laughs> <laughs> Rogers, Mr. Rogers, how are you doing? I'm still good. Yeah. So <laughs> let me take you back a bit to where we talked about the stage play. How you moved from theatre to um, screen acting. Why is it that theatre is losing that? Should I call it value? Why are people not concentrating on the theatre? Is it because we are in in the digital? stage where everybody is so fast paced, people want to bring out their phones, they want to watch movie online, when they get home just put on the TV and watch rather than buying tickets to sit down to watch films. Why? What is the reason? Okay, so that one <coughs> is one of the reasons. Um, uh, right now you can sit in your, in your home and watch a film. You can make your popcorn, buy your drink, switch off your lights <laughs> to get the feel of a cinema. Uh, the second is the infrastructure we have in our country has contributed greatly to to why most of us don't value um, state performances again. It still happens. Uh, Balan Lost in Peter still does it successfully. Um, what's his, what's the name of this guy? I mean, if you go to the, in Freedom Park, there's a particular festival that they have um, once in once in a year, I think. Um, so, so there are there are still some of them that are still successful with it, um, but the, the like it, it it takes it takes a lot coming out of your house to say okay I'm going to see a stage play and then you're coming back. Imagine going to National Theatre for instance to go and watch but a stage play. But we go to the cinema to watch film, even yeah. for the pandemic. Yes, I, I'm coming there. Okay. I'm coming there. Imagine leaving your house, say you you want to go and watch a stage play in National Theatre for instance. Um, you're going to go traffic, you're going to come back in traffic. Imagine that really traffic. Crazy. Mm -hmm. And then you're coming back. It's late. You're not, you, if you get home alive, praise God. That's the truth. So you want to ask yourself, do I want to risk all of this? The insecurity, everything. Do I want to risk that for going to enjoy a stage performance? Um, so that, that, that has also contributed. Now, like I said, what I said, your first point, 
is one reason. Digital. Digital. Yeah. Look, that's that's where the world is right right now. But that's where that's where the world is. Um, very soon, okay. filmmakers are gonna have it tough. You know what? Yeah. Let me explain to you. Um, you can go on your phone and watch a skit of two minutes, mm -hmm. of five minutes. Mm -hmm. They're taking over the entire space. So you feel comedy skits will take over uh, no, film? No, I said they're taking over the entire space. You see, the reason why they do that is because they understand that people want to just watch something very quick. But if you observe that, if you observe, if you're scrolling through your phone, you watch macaroni, you laugh. You watch Shaggy, you laugh. While you are there, you probably have spent 30 minutes on your phone going through one comedy skit or another. Now, I'm not saying this is going to take over the conventional filmmaking, no. But I'm saying that's part of the digital revolution that we're talking about. Most of your feature films, like <coughs> Voiceless and Oloibri, are very thought-provoking. When I watched Oloibri, I was like, okay, I had, even Voiceless, I had an idea of what goes on in the other parts of Nigeria that yeah. I do not have the opportunity to see. Mm. These kind of films, people will say, are not commercially uh, valuable Bible, in, yeah. in, in, in Nigeria. <coughs> so why do you still make these films? Um, I make them because someone like you watched it and now understands what happens in a library. By the way, that community exists. Yes. They still go it through that same thing. <laughs> yeah, it exists. When we made that film, we went into that community... Um, my director is a white guy. I took him into that community. He stayed there for a couple of days. I told him, you will not make this, you will not direct this film until you understand what the people are going through. My writers went in there. We went there. We, we went, we, we, we talked to them, we spoke with them, we understood what they were going through. That story is based on true life story. Look, Ken Sarewa, may so rest in peace, died for a cause. What he died for it's still being fought today. Voiceless was one of the few films that was considered for um, to represent Nigeria at the Oscars. Mm. So we finally got a nomination. But we're yet to win an Oscar. First of all, I want to know why you told that story, Voiceless, and the whole process, the whole creative process, mm -hmm. the pre-production, the filming, and every, even the post-production of that film. I believe in making films that have got a message. Okay. That's me. And whether it's, whether it's TV series or film, my, 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 my quest, the question I ask myself is, why am I making this film? Okay. I believe people need to laugh. Johnson's, we, we make people laugh. But we still teach you something. I'm not saying others don't. I will never judge anybody's work because you, you, you made your work for an audience yeah. and your audience love it. You get it. Um, so... For Voiceless, it was just the thing of there are two sets of people with this Boko Haram, um, um, so this insurgents. There are the girls who get kidnapped, and there are the boys who get integrated unwillingly. Yeah. Now, when these two people come out, the society sees them as outcasts. Now, this boy that was, that was integrated, no fault of his, why don't we find a way to to rehabilitate that boy. This girl that was taken by these people, she goes in there, um, all manner of nonsense, gets pregnant, comes out, and then somebody somewhere says, oh, um, that child is an outcast. No. This, these things, what, whatever you saw in that movie, happened real life. Wow. Yeah, I'm telling you. We made our research. We spent, we spent over one year trying to get the script right, wow. one year. So he went through one draft to another, to discussions, to that, to that, to that. We, uh, we just put stories together and then we made, we made the script out of stories that exist. Um, so after that, we went into casting. We told ourselves we are not going to use any known face because we want the story to resonate. We don't want the actors to take away from the message. Mm -hmm. um, some people said, you're not going to sell. I'm like, that's fine. What am I looking for? I'm looking for the message. I know someone somewhere is probably going, is this guy a filmmaker? Is he a businessman? Yes, I am a businessman. When you get into a project, you ask yourself, 
what am I making this for? You get, um, uh, and let me not talk about politics, but yeah, <laughs> you ask yourself, what am I making this for? So for us, we, we always ask ourselves this, that, that question before we delve into anything. Um, then we went into casting. We traveled um, six states. Wow. Yeah, traveled six states. Um, the boy, the lead actor boy, we found him in Joss. The girl we found in Kaduna. Wow. Um, um, so, it was, so majorly we found the actors between Kaduna, Kanu, and Abuja, and Joss, sorry. So we, so we went around went round northern Nigeria. We actually even had an audition in Lagos. So we went around northern Nigeria. We wanted to get the right fit. We wanted to get the right people. So it took us a while. Then um, we finished that one. And then we started the process of, OK, let's start to make the film. Our set construction took us like five months. Wow. Yeah, so we had a team. We had a team in Joss. So we decided, you know what, we're going to make this film in Joss. So we had a team in Joss that built the set. The camp, everything you saw there, we built. So we went into a village, got an open space, and then we built. We built our camp and then um, if you, no, we didn't build the mud houses here, but the mud houses around us. Um, but this is the fascinating part. Just shortly before, a week before, a week before principal photography, our investors pulled out. Wow. <laughs> so how did you carry on with your plan? Nagodo. <laughs> well, seriously, how hard or easy is it to get investors and sponsors in making films well it is in hard. nigeria yeah not, not just nigeria alone but it but in nigeria it is hard and you know why it is hard right. because um even though uh even though people know that films make money in nigeria um but it is it is also a market or a business or an industry that is like um for want of better word, like it's like the stock market you can crash and you can have it all. You get it. So it's so it's not it's not dependent on your actors. I live with the mantra of as long as there's satisfaction on the part of the viewer and on the part of the filmmaker, then your then your film has been successful. Some people say that Nollywood needs to win an Oscar to put Nollywood on the map. The the world's attention is on Nollywood already. Okay. And um, the reason why I say so is because um, the big players are coming into Nigeria. They're sweeping into Africa. Apart from South Africa, Nigeria is the next big place to find films. Um, some of us have started realizing that. And, um, and you can see on, uh, in Netflix, on Netflix, for instance, you find the not so good films, the very good films, and the wow, wow, wow films. Um, some, are, some are beginning to realize it. And some, uh, our, our movies are different. Technically, artistically, high production value. We're beginning to pay attention to what we turn out. I know you probably will say, oh, no, that's not true. You still have a lot of... But, <laughs> but, but the truth is, as a filmmaker, I've seen the difference. I've okay. seen the difference from, from where we used to be, where we are now, and we're going somewhere. Welcome back. I hope you're having a good time because I am, and I still have. Should I use a veteran? No, okay, just Mr. say Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, welcome back. <laughs> uh, tell us about the African Magic original film. What is the idea behind it? Okay. Um, so, two things for us African Magic original films. One um, it was an initiative by Amnet, then the director of Biola Labi. Um, America Clopper. So the idea was let's make short films, but they're just made for television. So they're okay. called telefilms. That's one. Two, let us use those films to grow our industry, discover new talents, give, give, um, give space to up and coming to be able to thrive. And um, I'm glad to say that with um, 80 Films Season 1, 65 Films Season 2, 40 films, season three, that I executive produced. Um, that's a total of um, 100 and something, 160 films to the about. Ah, okay, I'm a veteran. <laughs> thank you, finally. Finally, thank you for agreeing huh? to that. <laughs> 180 films, yeah. One, 
180 <laughs> films. So a total of 180 films that I executive produced. You know, produced. I can actually call you the master of pitches. <laughs> because you know how to pitch to investors <laughs> and other, any other person you need to be on your project. Hey, bring so them wait, what, what <laughs> elements should a pitch have to be able to convert or push through I, I, for filmmakers? I think the first thing is your story, um, the viability of your story, of course your, your budget, well, maybe, maybe even before your budget, um, yeah, your budget and then the possible return on investment. Yeah. Um, most people who invest into your films are businessmen, yeah. they're, they're business people. I give you five bucks, I want ten bucks. Can you give me ten bucks? I can give you ten bucks. And you have now, to deliver. And you have to deliver. But for some, this is a good story. Wow. And um, you know what? I'm just going to support you. There, there, are lot, there are a lot of people like that. There are better people. Some people in, in our industry, they know, they know how to do this better than me. Me, I'm just a passionate filmmaker. But in all of this, making <coughs> TV series, African Magic original films, making feature films, going from one meeting to another, traveling, pitching your ideas to other people, you're always busy, you're always on the road. You don't want to imagine what I had to do <laughs> to get him on this show, but... Yes, so how do you get the time for family relaxation? And how do you get the space to now create? Think about everything you've done for the day. Get the creative juice and do more. Since you're always busy around the <laughs> clock. So tell us. So I've got a great team. And so okay. we, we share responsibilities. Okay. So my big head only has very tiny thing inside. Mm. The rest is the team. Um, um, so I, I, I still find time to relax, funny enough. Um, I'm one of those who sleep for hours. <laughs> Is that healthy, though? Well, that's very relative. Okay. <laughs> they say six hours, right? Or eight hours? Because I do eight hours. Yeah. I don't do eight hours. I'm I old, do. so I do four hours. <laughs> <laughs> no more questions, trust me. <laughs> it was really nice talking with you on this show. I'm very happy that you came on my show. But before you leave, I want you to just say something to... The audience, a young filmmaker, Nigerians. Um, tough one. Um, uh, listen, for for me as a filmmaker, I think one of the things that I've seen me through um, filmmaking or the business of film and television is um, my doggedness. If I believe that this work. This story needs to be told. It doesn't matter to me if I have support or not. I will do it. I will go for it. Um, and then find your team. <laughs> find your team. They make you. That's the truth. Your team, if you have the right set of people, you will do anything. You will go anywhere because you would always have them. Uh, Is that good enough? Yes. Brilliant. Okay. Excellent. It's Mr. Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being on the show. My name is Ahine Atta. Thank you for watching. You know what to do. Click the like button, subscribe, share with your friends, and come back for more. Bye.